Let's take a look at options for entry-level Canon cameras. If you really want a Canon camera, what's available new right now for you? You have the Canon RF mount, which is their newest one that they're really focusing on. You have the Canon EFM mount, which is also a mirrorless mount, but in my opinion, it's going to be going away. We'll see. And you also have the original DSLR mount, the cheaper APS-C. These are all APS-C cameras that I'm going to be looking at. So for example, I looked at something maybe not the cheapest, but available at the moment. We have the EFS T7 DSLR. A lot of stuff available for EF mount. You can get a lot of used lenses if you want a traditional DSLR. DSLR. Currently new, 479 for the T7 with the lens, 1855. EFM EOS M camera, the M50 Mark II. They're still selling it new for $600 with the lens. The nice thing about this lens is that it's 15 millimeters, so it's a little wider than the kit lenses for these other cameras. However, I think the EFM mount is going away. We'll see. They're still selling it, but I wouldn't expect to be able to upgrade your camera and get new features at this point because they just haven't been releasing anything new for that mount and they're basically replacing it as far as i can tell with the rf mount stuff so we've got the r100 18 to 45 millimeter lens included for 600 dollars this is basically like a m50 and then you also have the r50 which is a little bit of a step up and that comes with the kit lens as well the 18 to 45 again it's not as wide as the efm kit lens but i wouldn't take that into consideration unless you're very strapped for cash relatively inexpensive obviously this r50 is the most expensive $200 premium. If you're looking towards the future, you potentially want to upgrade something down the line. I think the R50 is going to be the obvious option. So the main thing is, say with video modes, you're going to have a lot better options, more quality with R50 compared to everything else here. You're just going to get 1080p on this T7. Not great. The M50 has a lot of limitations at 4K, and I think that's the same situation with the R100. You won't get the dual pixel autofocus just on that feature alone. I would try to get the R50, save up a little bit more money, maybe wait for a sale. Hopefully the R50 is something you can go for. That's the main camera. Looking at lenses, it's not a great situation. Canon has been trying to restrict third parties from releasing RF lenses. I think they might have loosened their grip. So obviously, you can use manual focus stuff, but that's going to really depend on you and if you're fine with the manual focus stuff. In RF, we've got the 50 1.8, relatively cheap option. It's going to work kind of like a portrait lens on these APS-C cameras, considering the field of view. So in this case, I'd say it's kind of a given. If you want to have a portrait lens, get this 50. And then the 16, I think, is also a good buy for the APS-C cameras. You're going to consider the 1.6x crop factor. Yeah, it's relatively inexpensive as well. Nice jump up at f2.8 maximum aperture. I'd say this is also a, a given, but if you don't want to go that wide, you can go for this 28mm f2.8. Also relatively inexpensive. Obviously these do add up to a sizable amount of money. So if you can only pick one, totally depends on what type of photography you want to do. If you're going to do portraits, go for the 50. If you want just a general purpose lens that's a little bit faster than your kit lens, the 16 or 28. So there is a thing called crop factor you're just going to multiply this focal length by 1.6 and get the field of view equivalent of a full frame camera so 28 times 1.6 you're gonna have the 44.8 millimeter equivalent field of view I know there's a lot of words here, but basically I consider this a walk around lens at f2.8 is okay. So you get a little bit of a benefit compared to your kit lens. Potentially consider that. I'd probably go for the 16 personally because it's going to give you a little bit wider and even a benefit over your 18 to 45 millimeter kit lens. I would go for the 16 personally. The added benefit of these three lenses is that they are full frame capable. So if you do eventually consider upgrading to a full frame camera, you can take this lens and get even more benefit out of it in the same situation here 24 to 50 i wouldn't really consider this or your apc camera just wouldn't make a ton of sense looking towards the future you could potentially just get the camera body itself get this lens or something but obviously 18 compared to 24 millimeters you're just not going to get a very wide field of view 18 millimeters for that standard kit lens isn't great in my opinion but it's good enough in many situations be up to you if you want to go with that route and get the combination of camera plus lens. Obviously, if you need range, you're going to have relatively limited options. You have the 55 to 210 millimeter. This is specifically an APS-C lens. It's not going to transition very well to a full frame camera. 
if you do consider that in the future. But it's relatively inexpensive for a zoom lens. 210 millimeter zoom at f7.1 is not great. You're going to have more grain in your photos. You're going to have to be dealing with potentially lower shutter speeds. And these cameras do not have sensor-based stabilization in them. However, this lens does have optical stabilization. But in situations where your subject is moving a lot, that's not going to help you potentially as much. So there is a third-party lens here. We do have the Yangnyo. So if you want to consider that, it's a full frame lens 35 f2 is a decent focal length for an APS-C camera I don't know how it functions in practice it's a special order item at the moment and it's not that cheap but it would be lower cost compared to a Canon specific lens so maybe Canon is actually opening up a little bit which is good another thing 85 millimeter again this is a full frame lens it's gonna be relatively telephoto field of view on APS-C camera for the price and the aperture seems like an interesting option but you're gonna have to know specifically you need this type of lens to uh, consider it. This might be an interesting option for you, but I would probably just go for the cheaper APS-C lens unless you specifically want to transition to full frame. 7.1 is not great considering the aperture and the focal length. So this is one I would consider. It's a relatively inexpensive lens considering it covers full frame. 35 millimeter f1.8, nice walk around standard focal length lens considering the crop of your APS-C camera. Here's a weird repackaged lens if you want to get something more robust from a third party. It is actually the Canon lens inside a different casing. So here's another APS-C specific lens. Again, it's kind of on the cheaper end, but it's basically the same price as the camera itself. If you want one lens to rule them all, you could at least consider this 18 to 150, potentially getting it in a kit with the camera. Personally, I would not bother with the lens like this, but I would prefer 15 in a lot of situations. And then 150 f 6.3 for the aperture is not great, but at the very least, it's better than f 7.1. This is an interesting option for APS-C cameras, 15 to 30 millimeters. So if you didn't want to buy the APS-C kit lens, you want to look towards full frame potentially, but basically the same price as your camera itself. 15 millimeters is definitely a nice little benefit compared to 18 millimeters. Again, we're getting into more expensive territory on lenses. So if you do want a very specific macro lens with stabilization in it, 24 millimeter, consider the crop factor, the field of view, potentially an interesting option if you want macro specific stuff this is full frame capable relatively inexpensive considering the focal length and aperture 85 millimeter f2 it does one to two magnification which is not a true macro lens that would be one to one but you will be able to focus relatively close interesting option if you don't want some range with a larger aperture we're getting into more telephoto options if you want to do bird photography you can potentially look at stuff like this you're going to need quite a bit of light for 400 millimeters at f8 it does have stabilization in the lens i'd say this is relatively inexpensive considering what you're getting here and you have the 600 millimeter f11 stm lens for 800 dollars uh i really don't think i would consider this on the aps-c camera maybe one of the full frame cameras but you're gonna potentially struggle with shutter speeds i'd say that's pretty much it for your options here, unless you want something very specific, it's getting expensive. So 100 millimeter f 2.8 macro IS for thousand dollars, which is more than all of the cameras I'm talking about. But if you want that capability, you can at least check it out. Probably go with the R50 and this 15 to 30 millimeter if I wanted that kit lens type of setup, but I would most likely just get prime lenses. It really depends on your preferences. However, the prime lenses add that really nice benefit of wider apertures, so that's definitely worth it. And you're buying an interchangeable lens camera, so I think it makes sense to really consider prime lenses. Anyways, there aren't a huge amount of options with RF. I would not personally consider the EFM cameras, and I also wouldn't consider the EFS DSLR era cameras. So with the Canon T7, as far as I can tell, it does not have dual pixel autofocus in live view mode. That's a huge disadvantage for that camera. You're gonna have the very clunky standard autofocus system in SLR mode. And then when you go to live view, you're gonna have a contrast based autofocus system. As far as I can tell, that's a really not great camera considering the price is basically very similar to these other options. So I'd definitely go with the R100 compared to the T7 if you really needed to save money. Basically go RF at this point. I would not consider the EFM. I wouldn't consider the SLR era lenses and cameras and everything else. Those are your options at the moment. Not great in my opinion, but at the very least, if you want Canon, 
They have nice interfaces and things like that. They're pretty easy to use. They are functional. I go with R50 and lenses related to that. Mostly prime lenses. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. Scott of Photography Bonsai. Thanks.